questioned myself, as I think we tend to do a lot as women, of, can I really do this? I know nothing about this sector. Um, but what I saw instantly is, here is a way to give back to the world right now. Welcome to another episode of Women Worldwide. Thank you so much for tuning in and for joining us with everything that's going on in your world today. We will continue to deliver the guests with the advice to help. You are sharing how you're doing and how you're feeling. And as you do, of course, we're here to help. Okay, let's get right to the topic and today's guest. The topic is the entrepreneur and finding your passion and superpower so you can do all of the things that you love. And that's why I have joining me on the show, Sangeeta Verma, because Sangeeta is doing all of the things that she loves. She's a serial entrepreneur and she's also founded three gaming and video companies, startups, and probably has, uh, been funded, I want to say $33 million, which is a huge number. Sangeeta also has worked really hard to establish new business ventures, and she's she provides strategies to consumer cutting edge companies and also emerging technology companies. And guess what? Sangeeta is on to her next venture, which is Give Suite, and she's going to share all about this. So Sangeeta, welcome. Welcome to Women Worldwide. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me on. I'm really honored to be here. Oh, well, it is great to have you on and to see you. And I sort of kicked it off, you as the serial entrepreneur, doing the things that you love, showing your superpowers every single day. Maybe you could just share how you kind of went down this path of cutting edge, and now what you're doing with Gift Suite. Sure, I would love to. So I have to say, I am the sort of unexpected entrepreneur. It's not anything I ever thought wow. about. It's not That's anything I aspired to. I actually um, kind of fell into it, shall we say. But prior to becoming an entrepreneur, I had always... Um, headed up new divisions of companies and new groups and companies or businesses. Um, that was just what I tended to do best. And so it's interesting because when you look back and connect the dots, you can see how you get there. But at the time, I never thought about it. It was just, you know, those were the jobs that I had. That's what I love to do. That's what I excelled in. So I was, you know, um, given more responsibility to be able to start up new businesses but always within a corporate setting where I got a paycheck, right? And then um, I had my second son and decided I didn't want to go back to work full time. With my first one, I was fortunate to take a year off. And then with my second one, um, you know, California is six weeks paid maternity, which is horrible. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I couldn't imagine putting oh a baby gosh, into daycare <laughs> that young. Yeah, and I, and I know a lot of people do it and a lot of people have to do it. But I decided, no, I'm not going to do that. And so I actually started up my first venture funded company when my youngest Xander was three months old, because I didn't want to put him into daycare. And that's kind of how I fell into it. So I started um, the company I had been working for previously, I was running a new division for them, they didn't want to expand on it. But I thought it was still a really good idea. So my kitchen table, I started working on it, um, and then we were funded a year later. So we're bootstrapping for a year and venture funded a year later. And that's kind of how I fell into it. And, you know, little did I know that it would lead to five companies and over wow. $33 million raised. Oh, yeah. my gosh. That yeah. is absolutely amazing. So, so what is it about this company now that really makes you feel proud or that stands out? Oh, that's such a great question. Thanks for asking because, um, you know, as you mentioned, my background in previous 
companies had always been tech, right? Gaming, video, more tech related. And in fact, before COVID hit, I was working on a health related startup, which was also tech based. But then I think the universe just kind of puts you where you need to be because then COVID hit. Right. And um, I had, was given this opportunity to essentially take over a gift suite. It had been started by a friend of the family who wanted it to grow larger than she could, she could make it and she wanted to go get her MBA. So I looked at this and I questioned myself as I think we tend to do a lot as women of, can I really do this? I know nothing about this sector. Um, but what I saw instantly is here is a way to give back to the world right now. And so that's what I'm most proud about Gift Suite. So what we do is we create gift boxes and in particular work with corporations to create gift boxes, care packages for employees that are working from home, sheltering in place, to have that connection, to make them feel better. But the other side of it is that everything that we put in the box, uh, boxes are sourced from small businesses. I as love well, it. Yeah, as well as, you know, minority-owned, female-led, LGBT companies. Because between my partner Phoenix and I, we are a female-led, minority-owned, black-owned um, LGBT company. And so we really have the effort to help, you know, in small business, to help others like us while working with corporations and making employees that are stuck at home feel good. So that's what GiftSuite is about. And that is what I love about it, is that mission. Absolutely. And you're spreading so much joy as yes, you do so it in, in different ways. So and it's in a time that we need it. So, oh my critical. gosh, I was just going to mention that. If now is a time to ever be giving back, right, and doing what you're doing and, and helping socially conscious small businesses, it is definitely, definitely now. Yeah. I wonder, so mentioning this time that we sort of operate in and, you know, I talk about this new normal <laughs> we're all trying to find. Do you think it's different to be an entrepreneur today? And are there any characteristics that you think really have to stand out to function and excel in, in these times? Yeah. You know, I think, um, okay. So to me, the pandemic has been an accelerator. And I think that whatever trends are happening, it has accelerated. Yeah. And I think that's also the same for the traits that you need as an entrepreneur, right? So I think you've always needed to be tenacious and creative in order to be a good entrepreneur and to be able to sell your vision, right? But I think the pandemic has actually accelerated that in the sense that it's heightened it and you need to actually have more of all of those things now, yeah. right? So you just need to be more tenacious because you can't just go meet with somebody face to face anymore, right? And you need to be able to sell that vision because selling over video is very different than selling face to face as Absolutely. well, right? So when you think about um, whether you're trying to find investors or clients, the ability to communicate that passion and the ability to communicate clearly in, an, in a different medium is key. So I think all of those things really um, kind of are exaggerated more so with the pandemic. Absolutely. I mean, people are, I'm finding are not as comfortable on video, right? right? There's a camera right in front yeah. of you and you do come across a certain way. And I also find you have to keep your energy higher and yes. if your lighting isn't just right or your background is wrong. All of these things actually affect how you are coming across to other people. And I'm also finding, and I don't know if you feel this too, but you're managing the personalities around you in a different way because there is more, people are more stressed and you know maybe in a happier time, it's, those emotions aren't uh, showing up as, as frequently. So do you right. find that as well? I, I think that's absolutely true. I think that people are much more stressed and rightly so, right? We are in a very sort of unknown arena, not only with our own health, but the economy, um, people being stuck in a routine they're not used to, right? Children not yes. being able to go to school, having to work from home, all of that. So yeah, there's absolutely a lot of stress. There's, and for people that are not used to working from home, you add that layer as well. 
Um, and, you know, I think for me, that's kind of where I love what Gift Suite does, is because we really are trying to create gifts that address some of those needs. For example, we've got a kid's activity box because oh, we know, brilliant. yeah, we know <laughs> that, you know, parents are, have children at home that they're trying to keep busy and maybe they don't want them in front of a screen all the time or they want them to be doing other things. Um, so, yeah, I think just really looking at what are some of the needs that we have with the stresses that we're facing today. I mean, another great one is um, we've got a, oh, I should mention, so one of the things I love when we talked about background, right, and when I was questioning myself, what, yeah. oh, I don't know about this, is I combined the two. So I took my tech background and realized that we could be a more tech-facing gifting service in terms of the products that we offered. And so one of them, in fact, talking about stress that people have, is called the Sensate device. And it's like meditation without knowing how to meditate. It's well, like the I size of a- So many will, will benefit from that. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think it's really, for me, the joy has been saying, okay, people are hurting, people are stressed. What is it that we can do right now? Oh, I'm sorry, I just keep having things pop up that should never pop up. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Oh, the joys of, of learning the technology, right? I know. I, well, I thought I had turned everything off, and then all of a sudden, so apologies for that. Oh, um, but where I was headed with that, this was, people are stressed, people are worried, and so to be able to look at how can we help them through Gift Suite, how can our companies help them, by providing them with things that are maybe not considered traditional gifts, um, but to me is exciting. Well, I think your superpower is giving back in such a meaningful way. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you. I'm starting to really feel that. Um, so as an entrepreneur, you know, you, you've had a lot of success, but there are also challenges. And maybe you could just share with the Women Worldwide audience out there, how do you approach a challenge? Because if they're facing something, which I'm sure we, we all do in our business, in our lives, is there a way that you tackle or approach an obstacle? Oh gosh, great question. So yes, there, there are actually different strategies that I have for, for obstacles. Um, okay, I'll just share a couple of them. Great. Um, one is I, I have found, and we, we can talk about this later too in sort of the kind of self-care things, but is whenever I run across a problem, I don't think you can think your way out of a problem, right? Because I think that your brain puts up too many barriers and blockages for that. So what I found the best way to work out a problem is actually to write. And so I journal and I, I come up with ideas and um, maybe solutions that I don't think I would have thought of or that I know I wouldn't have thought of just thinking about because I think it allows your other parts of your brain to be able to communicate and let things out. So that's a big one that works for me. That's huge. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense because sometimes if we focus on it and think about it too much, we cut ourselves off to what would naturally flow into our minds. But yes. if you take a moment to just chill, right? And then go and journal, it yeah. might just come to you and you can write it out and let yeah. it Yeah, and that's exactly what I have found to be my experience. The other way to do that too, if you don't necessarily like to write, is talk to someone you trust. Because if you talk it out, right. you know, with someone that tends to come up that way as well. Um, and then the last tip that I do here is I remove myself from the situation. Meaning if you see the problem, it's almost like you've now taken yourself up a level. Unbelievable, all of these coming up. Oh. <laughs> What's happening here? I don't hear I, them on my end, so. Oh, you don't, okay, do no. you see them? No. On your end? Oh, you <laughs> don't. Oh, then I'm, I'm gonna stop. I thought they were coming up on your screen. No, no, no okay. see anything. No more then. <laughs> Okay, so um, yeah, take yourself up out of it a level. So imagine you've got a problem and if you can visualize the problem, and sometimes with me it's just, I don't know what direction to go, right? And so I imagine if I'm sitting in a room, 
that I've now sort of take, and this sounds sort of surreal, but I take myself out of my body and look down on that room at myself and the situation. And all it does is it gives you another perspective to oh, be able to smart. solve ish. Yeah. And to be able to solve problems. But I think with that other perspective, because you're up higher, you see more too. Right. right. You're not like mired down here. You're now up here and you're able to look at it in a different way and go, Oh, okay. Maybe I should do this instead. Yeah. It's much more objective. Because yes. the minute you remove yourself, you take away the anxiety of exactly. the situation. Because it's not you anymore. Exactly. Right? You're up here right. looking down at something or looking at something in a broader context, and it's not you. So you can then sort of take all of your limitations out of the problem solving. Oh, I love it. So as we're talking, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, you know, you, you've been doing so much and you're offering all of this great advice. Who is it that has influenced you the most? Yeah. You know, I am so lucky because I have a lot of amazing mentors in my life that I learned from. Um, I will mention, why don't I just mention a couple really quickly here. One who I think is, who's just been so amazing in my business career is a gentleman named Jim Wims. And Jim was a, an old boss of mine, probably, gosh, like 25 years ago now. Um, but what I learned from him just by watching the way that he did business interactions and the way that he treated people, just, you know, such a class and grace in the business world of how to handle yourself. And so I'm, you know, I have... We need a lot of that today. We do. <laughs> we need we a do. bunch of gyms. <laughs> we, we all need a bunch of gyms in this world. It's true. true. And I think he's also just a great example of how a powerful white male executive, um, you know, mentored and championed an up and coming, and in my case, minority female, sure. right, within a company. And so that is, was really powerful for me. Um, he was also the first person that talked me into taking my venture funding because the first company, I wasn't sure if I was going to do it. I called him. And he, you know, he talked me through it. We, you know, I explained to him what I was doing. And, um, you know, he's the one who talked me into taking the venture funding. And he was absolutely right. That was, you know, the right thing to do because it just put my career and my mm -hmm. learning on another Guided trajectory. You. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Shout out to Jim. I know. I know. So wonderful. And then wonderful female mentors. You know, I'll just mention one because I know. Yeah, please do. I have so many, but um, there is a wonderful entrepreneur VC in the Silicon Valley named Heidi Rosen. And Heidi is really well known. I mean, she's kind of famous in her own right with um, all the students that she has and in the VC world and the business world. But it, what I learned from her was really about speaking your truth and being vulnerable um, because I had grown up in a household where you never talked about your problems. You just always put on a good face right, for the world. Smile, right, smile, grin and bear it. Grin and bear it, or you just never admitted anything was wrong. You just kind of glossed over it, and everything was beautiful and perfect, and you are perfect. And so to meet this woman who was, you know, so powerful and smart and down to earth, and yet was be able to speak so um, honestly about her life, good and bad, was really a revelation for me. It was just like, wow, you can do that. And it's okay. Right. And so, um, yeah, forever grateful for her for teaching me that. That's what, um, I mean, role models and, and mentors, women especially need to show that vulnerable side. I mean, that is something that's so important so that younger women can understand and, and men. Yes. It's good. Yeah, all of us, right? Yes. Built on vulnerability as well as all yeah. the strength and the confidence and everything. Sure, but I mean, we always hear about that stuff. We don't yes. hear about the whole being person, which is right. so important. Absolutely. So what would you, with everything that you sort of have learned, um, what would you say if you could give yourself advice, but to your younger self, so let's mm -hmm. say to your 21-year-old self, what would you say to yourself 
that you you know now that you didn't know then? Yeah, that's you know I Fun was question, lucky. Right? <laughs> yeah, no, but it's a but it's a great question, and I um, I actually heard Sheryl Sandberg speak a couple of years ago. And, um, and while I don't necessarily agree with everything that she had put into Lean In, she did have a piece of advice that really resonated with me. And I thought it was just so smart. And I've actually shared it with young 20-year-old females I know because I thought it was that good. So I'll just share it here. And that is that, um, you know, certainly I grew up in a generation where we thought about, you know, getting married and having families and kind of, you know, juggling careers um, and so I think if you're in that mindset, when you're in your 20s, you're, you should be just really careful that the, your partner that you pick is one that is going to be able to grow with you, right? That is really yes. going to be able to support you as you grow, however you grow, right? I think at that age, it's hard for us to know really what we're going to be doing, who we are going to become, um, but having a partner that you can see growing with you in all these different ways and supporting you in all these different ways is really key, especially if you are a woman that is aspiring to do great things in the world. Because I have found that is incredibly hard for a lot of men to have a partner that is like that. So just pick your partner really wisely. And then the other really good thing that, um, that she said, which I thought was brilliant, is um, you know, women, they go into their careers and, you know, you may not get married or have children until you're in your 30s, right? So you've got a good long 10 years there or so of being able to work. And so you shouldn't put your career kind of on the back burner thinking, oh, well, I'm going to get married and have kids because that's what I want to do. You've got this time to really, you know, dive into your career, spend time on it. And then if you decide, oh, I want to leave it to have children, great. That, no problem, right? I mean, I did that. I started yeah. at my own companies because I wanted to spend time with my kids. But it gives you a, a place of power. You're going to learn more. And if at some point you decide you want to come back into the working world, you want to start your own business, you want to, um, you know, work part-time, whatever, you'll have more options. And this is really about just keeping your options open. Excellent. So, you know, I, I want to pivot just a little bit going back to, we talked about cutting edge and that mm -hmm. makes me think of technology and social media. Yeah. And I'm wondering how you're feeling about social media and how much gift suite uses or doesn't use social media. Is it important to the brand for promotion? the good of social media. Right. You know, so it's critical to the brand. And honestly, we're not using it enough. So that is one of the things that we're working on is to really um, start upping our social media presence, but also, um, you know, in how we build a community around it. Yeah, I was and just so, going to say it's a community for your business. It is. It, it absolutely is. And we're in early days. I mean, we started Gift Suite. Um, you know, my partner and I really kind of took it over and and started working on it in March, right as COVID hit. Oh and, my goodness. Yeah, and so With it's been it's interesting, running, right? Yes, right. So it's been really and well, we were inspired by COVID to do it. Sure, but you know, it's been an interesting learning experience to try do it, running a business during COVID as a startup, right? Because if everything from incorporation paperwork to getting, you know, getting the items in stock is taking a lot longer. And so I would say that we are probably about 30 days behind where I wanted to be with our social media today, but we'll get there, right? Yeah. I think, um, yeah, I mean, and for me personally, it's a lot of new stuff to learn which which is great because I love learning new stuff but I was just gonna yeah. say that's perfect for you thank you yeah <laughs> it, no it is but it's the Keep time learning. to just like dive in and learn yeah and see what kind of unique things can we do on social media absolutely and every time you turn around there is a a new community <laughs> to yes. test out and it's interesting because you know I'm I'm finding and you probably see this too that wherever your audience is and if you're catering to um not necessarily your company but if you do cater to a younger audience 
they will migrate away from wherever their parents are. <laughs> yes. So yeah. It's like whatever parents discover and grandparents discover, they will go somewhere else. And that, right. that brings new communities all the time. Yeah. No, so. which makes perfect sense, actually, because I think we did that with our parents. <laughs> yes. Yes, definitely. Well, um, I can't even believe that we're at that question where I ask you to give some in parting advice. Uh, you've given a lot of advice for the whole show, but if you could just share maybe how the, the viewers, the listeners out there, what's a great way for them to find their passion and to really share their superpower with the world? Yeah, you know, it's, it, it's challenging because I think we're not, um, we don't grow up thinking about the fact that we have superpowers and how do we find them. And so it is challenging and it took me a long time to find mine. Um, I think the best thing you can do is um, do the things you love and you'll find there and then kind of take a look at them, right? Sit back and go, oh, what are these things have in common? And as you sort of put the dots together, you'll start to see trends emerging and you'll start to see, oh, I'm really good at this. This must, which is how I discovered mine. Um, I think the other thing that really helps too is a lot of times we focus, again, this gets back to we're just so in ourselves and focusing on our problems and in our situation is start learning some lateral things. Start learning things that don't necessarily have anything to do with your career, um, and, but will help your career. And so I'll give you a couple of examples. I think um, public speaking is great, right? Learn, yes. um, and, and it can be fun. It doesn't have to be, oh, I've got to get in front of an audience and how terrifying is that? Take an improvisational class, right? Do improv. It's a great way to start actually, not only do you have fun, but you learn communication skills. And you learn skills of how to keep your energy up, for example, for interviews like this. <laughs> Um, but I think the more that you kind of do some of these lateral things uh, to increase your skills, you will then start to be able to see the things that you excel at and the things that people come and ask you about, right? That's another way to find your superpower is if someone is always coming to you saying, oh, you make the best chocolate cake, right? That's an indication. Can I, <laughs> right. Can I, exactly. Can I get your recipe? Or you're so good at, you know, calming down toddlers, how do you do that, right? It's just, I think when people come and ask you for advice about spe specific things, take a look at that because that may be your superpower too and you just don't know it yet. Excellent, excellent advice. And last question, super easy. Where can people find out more about you and your work? Oh, thanks. So certainly, um, well, Gift Suite is the best place to go, but which is giftsuite.com. For me personally, probably LinkedIn. I think at this point, I don't have, um, I should be more organized and have a sangeetaverma.com site up with all of my information. Coming. <laughs> but I don't, yeah, coming. I've just been busy. Um, LinkedIn, I think, is, is great. You can just look up Sangeeta Verma, which is S-A-N-G-I-T-A-V-E-R-M-A. -I, -E I should have a sign. <laughs> I didn't think name, about it. By the way, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, thank well, you. thank you so much. You you've shared a lot about your journey. Definitely, you have superpowers. <laughs> it's clear. Well, we all do. We all do. Thank you. And you're doing what you love. It, it really shows. So you are an inspiration. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And also a, a big thank you to Nicole Rodriguez, who is the CEO of NRPR for sponsoring this episode of Women Worldwide. And of course, a big thank you to all of you for tuning in, for showing up and for being here and for sharing all the time. Keep the feedback coming and the conversations going. You know, you can always tweet me. I'm at Deep Breckenridge. Okay, friends, until our next episode, stay safe, focused, energized, and feeling empowered. Thank you.